All right, today we're diving into one of the most baffling and frankly fascinating conditions in all of medicine. It's called Munchausen syndrome, and it's all about the sickness of deception. So let me just start with this question because it really gets to the heart of it. What if the most dangerous illness wasn't a virus or a disease, but was actually the desperate, all-consuming need to be ill? That's the strange and complex world we're about to explore. So our story here begins where it almost always does, inside a hospital. For the doctors and nurses, it starts out as a complete and utter medical mystery. Okay, so picture this. A patient comes in with an incredible, really dramatic story. But as the doctors start running tests, things just don't add up. The symptoms they describe sound perfect, almost textbook, but every single test comes back clean. Then, the patient might even suggest a new, even rarer disease. And get this, they're eager, sometimes even pushy, about getting risky, invasive surgeries. And when the doctors come back with good news, you know, hey, you're perfectly healthy, they get angry, defensive, or poof, a brand new symptom pops up. It's this deeply frustrating and honestly dangerous cycle for everyone. This pattern of behavior is so specific, so unusual, that it actually got its name from a pretty unusual historical character a guy who was famous for telling unbelievable stories. Now, it's so important to get this straight. This isn't just someone telling a little white lie. The official clinical name is factitious disorder imposed on self, and that's key. It's a recognized severe mental disorder where a person is compulsively driven to fake, exaggerate, or even cause an illness in themselves. The name we all know, Munchausen syndrome, comes from a real guy. Baron Munchausen was this 18th century German nobleman who became a legend for telling these wild, over-the-top, totally fabricated stories about his adventures. And that name just perfectly captures the elaborate, dramatic deception that's at the core of this disorder. Okay, this is a really crucial point. We have to be careful not to confuse Munchausen with other conditions that might look similar on the surface. For example, there's mingling. That's when someone fakes an illness for a clear external prize, you know, like trying to get money or drugs or to get out of work. Then there's somatic symptom disorder, where the person feels real physical pain, but it's actually being caused unconsciously by psychological stress. Munchausen is the strange one in the middle. The deception is totally intentional, but the motivation isn't external. It's purely psychological. It's this deep need for the attention and care that comes with being the patient. Because there's so much active deception going on, clinicians pretty much have to become detectives. They learn to look for these classic patterns and major red flags. And there's definitely a pattern. It often builds into this predictable, really destructive cycle. The person hospital hops. They go from one ER to another to keep from getting caught. They show up with a big, dramatic story. And they often know a surprising amount of medical jargon, which makes them seem really convincing. They'll demand all sorts of tests and procedures. But here's a weird tell. Sometimes the symptoms just disappear when they think no one's watching. And the final step is a classic. The moment a doctor gets a little too close to the truth, the patient will often leave against medical advice and just vanish, only to pop up in a different hospital, ready to start the whole thing over again. Doctors also look for more concrete evidence. A patient having what's sometimes called a checkerboard abdomen, basically a whole bunch of surgical scars from different operations, that's a huge red flag. A history of tampering with lab samples, like adding blood to a urine test to fake results, is another one. And I probably won't surprise you to hear that the disorder is actually more common in people who have worked in healthcare because they have that insider knowledge to make their stories sound way more believable. And all of this brings us to the biggest, most important piece of this whole puzzle. We've talked about what they do, but now we have to ask the really tough question, why? I mean, really think about that. It just seems to go against every natural instinct we have, right? Most of us do everything we can to avoid being sick. So why on earth would somebody actively want illness, pain, and dangerous medical treatments? And the answer is just profoundly sad. The goal isn't actually to be sick. The goal is to assume the sick role. It's about getting all the attention, the sympathy, the nurturing, and the care that comes with being a patient. For some people, it's literally the only way they've ever learned how to feel important, or cared for, or even just seen. And the roots of this often go way back, usually to deep psychological pain. A lot of individuals with Munchausen have histories of really severe childhood trauma, abuse, or neglect. The hospital, in a way, becomes a kind of substitute for the safe, caring home they never had. It's also very often linked with other personality disorders and just these profound, deep-seated issues with identity and self-worth. 
So as you can probably guess, trying to treat a disorder that's literally built on denying the truth, well, that creates enormous challenges for doctors and therapists. The hard reality here is that the outlook isn't great. This is a chronic condition, and relapses are really common. A diagnosis is only ever made after doctors have ruled out every other possible medical illness, and even then, many patients will completely refuse to accept it and just continue their destructive cycle. Because of all that, the goals for treatment have to be really realistic. The number one priority is just safety, protecting the patient from harm caused by unnecessary tests and surgeries. The best way to do that is with a single, coordinated medical team to stop the doctor shopping. And really, the focus has to shift away from trying to cure them and instead move towards simply managing the behavior and trying to minimize the physical damage they do to their own bodies. And we have to talk about a really chilling, really dangerous variation of this. It's called Munchausen by proxy, or the clinical term, factitious disorder imposed on another. This is when a caregiver, very often a parent, fakes or actually causes an illness in someone they're supposed to be taking care of, usually a child. And at that point, it's not just a mental disorder anymore. It is a terrifying form of child abuse. So we end right back where we started, with this incredible paradox. Munchausen syndrome is a desperate, heartbreaking cry for help, but it's disguised as a condition that rejects any and all genuine attempts to heal. And it forces us to ask this really tough question. How do you care for someone whose very illness is built on a dangerous rejection of true help? Thanks so much for joining me for this explainer.